everything. And the way this works is I can write uh, x plus 3 equals 10, and then we'll solve it. Once you, we're both seeing that, you can see that? Yep, I can see it. Okay. So, tonight, do you have problems that you can verbalize? Most algebra problems can be verbalized. Uh, yeah. Geometry would be a little tougher. Geometry, you might have to send me pictures of the shapes that you're looking at. But okay. algebra, generally, you can verbalize it. Sometimes you won't be able to. If, you know, if they're giving you a graph and they want you to come up with the equation of that graph, then you need to send me a picture of the graph. Yeah. And okay. I'll, I'll bring it up on my screen, and we'll both be looking at it. Okay. All right. But for tonight, hopefully we'll, you'll be able to verbalize everything. So yeah, what do you got for starters? Um, so I'm pretty sure last time you said that we had the same textbook, just um, maybe different versions. So... I mean, if you want to, we're on page 426, and it's going to be 39 through 45 odd, and then 69 through 83 odd. I, I can verbalize the majority of those. Two. I do have your textbook. <laughs> it's in my car, I think. Hold on. Yeah, I, I think I left it in my car. So if you can verbalize tonight... I'll make sure I have that textbook in front of me next time. Okay, yeah, for sure. All right, so the first problem is f of x equals 1 over 32x to the fifth. And then we're finding the inverse power function. Did I write that correctly? Um, I think that it's actually 1 over 32 and then, like, multiplied by x to the fifth power. Ah, okay. So x is not in the denominator. Right. So it's like this. Yes. Okay. And you're finding the inverse function? Yep. Okay. How do you find inverses? So there's three ways to find inverse functions, I'm pretty sure. And so it's either going to be numerically, uh, graphically, or algebraically? Okay, let's let's do it algebraically for starters. Okay, so then... A very this. simple process for finding an inverse function. Switch the variable, step one, and then solve for y, step two. Okay. So if I switch the variables, I'm going to put x over there, and I'm going to put that there. Okay. Now, can you solve that equation for y? Yes. Okay. What's the first step? You would multiply both sides by 32. And then what's the next step? And then you would take, uh, or you would do the fifth root on both sides. Yeah, and one way to do the fifth root is to take it to the one-fifth exponent. That's the same thing as doing fifth root. Okay. The advantage of using fractional exponents is that what we need to do on the right side is multiply the two exponents, right? Right. So we end up with y to the 1. And then on the left side, what's the fifth root of 32? Um... It would be... They're always going to make these so that they're small whole numbers. All right. So would it be 2 then? Yeah. In other words, you know the answer is going to be 2, 3, or 4 on problems okay. like this. Just always know that. Okay? All right. So the fifth root of 32 is 2. We also have to take the fifth root of x. So... So I can write it like that. I can also write it like this. Both of those are the same. Okay. And that's what the inverse function is. Is this is the inverse function. All right. Okay. Okay. Basically what inverse functions do conceptually is they undo 
what the function did. In other words, if I said you have a function y equal x squared, well, the inverse function is square root of x. Because if I applied square root of x to x squared, I get x. So inverse functions always undo what the function did. If my okay. original function was y equals square root of x, well, now the inverse function must be x squared. But the way to come up with inverse functions is a two-step process and only two steps. Switch the variables first and then solve for y. You can also do it in whichever order you want. In other words, you could solve for x and then switch the variables. I've just found that it always makes sense to do it in the same way every time. So when I calculate an inverse function, I switch the variables first, and then I solve for y. Now, notice that originally you gave me f of x equals... Uh, 132 times x to the fifth. Well, the very first step I made was switch f of x equals y. In other words, that's the same as this. Whenever you see an f of x, it's the same as having y. And now I can apply my two rules. In other words, now I can switch the variable and solve for y. Okay. Uh, all right, what else do you got? Um, the next one is uh, f of x equals negative 9 over 4 times x squared. Okay. And then x would be less than or equal to 0. So what's the next step that I should write? Um x squared. How about, how about y? Let's, let's turn f of x into y. Okay. For starters, just because it makes everything a little easier. Okay, now we're ready to start. Now switch the variables and solve for y. Okay. So would it just be x squared? Well, equals, first of all, switch... First of all, switch the variables. Okay, so then it would just be x equals negative 9 over 4 times y squared. Right. Now solve for y. All right, so then first maybe multiply by negative 4? Negative 4 ninths. If you're, if you're trying to get rid of a fraction in front of a variable, then you can do it in two steps. I can multiply both sides by 4 and then divide both sides by minus 9. But notice that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So okay. that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides by minus 4 ninths. I'm going to do it in one step only. And the beauty of that is it gets rid of that all in one step. So I end up with y squared equals negative 4 ninths times x. Uh-huh. And now what? And now you could um, take the square root of both. Okay. So basically so, I'm doing this. And at first it looks like that's not possible because it looks like we'd be taking the square root of a negative number. But remember the initial condition. X is less than or equal to zero. So X is negative. Since X is negative, we're going to be taking the square root of a positive number. Okay. Okay. And what's the square root of four ninths? Mm, uh, would that be two-thirds? Yeah. So I can pull a two-thirds out of there, right? In other words, okay. 
if I pull a two-thirds out, what I'm left with is that. <coughs> what I just wrote is the same as this. <coughs> in other words, I've taken the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. I've left the negative sign there. And this is fine because x has to be negative, so everything's perfect. And as long as you state x is less than or equal to zero, this is the answer. All right. Now, normally, let's go back to this step. I don't want to, I'm disappointed that they gave you this problem. Because normally when you solve an equation by taking the square root of both sides, the answer is always plus or minus. And okay. That's actually true here also. In other words, that's a plus or minus. So, so you actually don't end up with a function. You end up with a parabola that's horizontal. Okay, so would that be a relation instead of a function yes, then? exactly. In, in other words, if, you know, let me try to draw this. If I told you that y equals x squared, that's the quadratic that you've learned for a while, mm -hmm. like that, Yep. Okay. Now, if I want to find the inverse of that, well, I reflect it over the line y equal x, and what I end up with is something that looks like this. Mm -hmm. well, notice that the red function is not a function at all. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. So it's a relationship. Now, if I were to solve this by the way I've been talking about doing it, I'd switch the variables, x equal y squared. Then I would take the square root of both sides. Well, now I've got y equals plus or minus the square root of x. And notice that that is exactly what the red does, is it takes the, this is the plus square root of x, and this is the minus square root of x. So we have a relation that's actually a composite of two different functions. Hmm. Same thing as okay. a circle. If you have a circle, that's a relationship. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. But a circle is actually a composite of two different functions. So you definitely need the plus or minus, and the thing is, is that when they ask you to come up with the inverse function, you have to restrict the domain of the original function. Notice the first problem you gave me, they restricted the domain right there. By yep. doing that, they ensured that we would end up with a function. Mm-hmm since x has to be less than zero. Right. Okay. All right. So then... Do you have answers to these in the back of the book? Yeah, I do. Is that an odd one there? Yeah, it is. Look it up for me, would you? Just I'm curious uh, as to what they have to say. Okay. They say that the answer is... question is, do they put the plus or minus in front of the two cards? All right. Um, they said that... Um, ah, they don't. It's uh, the fifth root of 6x minus 4. Mm, that was a different problem. No, that's not... That is a different problem. 
I'm sorry. Okay, this is 41. Yes, it is. That would be, and in this case, sorry, uh, negative two-thirds square root of negative x. So they didn't give the plus or minus there. No, and here's the reason they didn't, is because if x has to be less than or equal to zero, then that's always a positive number. And it's only going to be the positive, not the negative. So it's going to be plus two-thirds times the square root of negative x. Okay. I'm not sure why the answer they gave you in the book was minus two-thirds. Uh, you can't even pull that minus out of there. The fact is, though, that if x is less than or equal to 0, well, then the square root of negative x is going to be a positive number. Yeah, okay. Okay, so okay. it's not okay. plus or minus, it's just the plus, given the fact that we know x has to be less than or equal to 0. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little puzzled by that, but let's go on. Let's not get hung up on that. Okay, so the next problem is uh, to find the inverse function of f of x equals negative 2x to the fifth plus one-third. Is there a parenthesis around anything? Nope. Just, it's like, just, just like I wrote it? Right, just like you wrote it. Okay, so what's the next line? That's the whole thing. Switch the variables is always step one. Yep, so you would make that f of x into a y. Okay, which I did already. So no. then it would be x equals negative 2y to the fifth plus one-third. Okay. Now, solve that for y. All right, so then first thing is divide by negative 2? Actually not. The first thing you want to do is get rid of anything that's being added or subtracted. Okay, so then we would subtract that one third. Yeah, that. that's easier to do. In other words, when you get rid of all of that, now you're left with dividing everything by minus 2. Right, so that's where you do. Okay, so let me do that. And then this side is going to come down to that. So now, what's the final answer? Um, would that be just that equation over or to the fifth root? Fifth root of that, yes. Okay. And now, the answer, was this the one you looked up? No, this wasn't. I can look it up real quick. Well, you don't need to. Let's talk about this for a second, whether I can simplify this or not. Let, let's right. over here on the right, I'm going to write this, and let's see if I can simplify that. Well... What if I multiply top and bottom by 3? And I can do that. I can always multiply top and bottom by 3 of any fraction. Well, if I multiply the top by 3, I get 3x minus 1. Multiply the bottom by 3, I get minus 6. And so those two are equivalent. Okay. So the final okay. answer they gave you, I believe you read something like that, right? Right. Go ahead and look it up again, make sure I got it exactly right. Okay. Might want to put a marker on that page. Yeah. Yep, it is the fifth root of they did negative one-half x plus one-sixth. Okay, notice what they're doing there. In other words, if I take 3x minus 1 over minus 6, I can split that up into two fractions. 
I can split it up into that fraction and that fraction. And that's when I get minus one-half x plus one-sixth. So I'm going to take the fifth root of that. And that's the answer they gave you, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. Now, this answer they gave you is really no better than the one I have circled above it. In other words, there's nothing in math that says you have to split it up into two fractions. It's an option, but not necessarily one that you should always do. Uh, I would have said that was the answer. It's the right. same number as this, but just expressed a little differently. It's like, you know, should you always factor an expression? Well, sometimes you should, sometimes you don't need to. So it's the same thing when you have a fraction like this. And let's just talk about that for a second. If I have a plus b over c, that I can always split up into a over c plus b over c. Correct. You don't have to do that, but you can do it. But Correct. if I have a over b plus c, you cannot. Split that up. That is not equal to A over B plus A over C. Because right. you have two terms in your denominator, not one. You can only split it up into fractions if you have a single term in the denominator. So okay. that doesn't work. In other words, if I had 1 over 2 plus 5, that's not the same as 1 half plus 1 fifth. But if I had 2 plus 5 over 3, that is the same as 2 thirds plus 5 thirds. Right. All right. Okay. What else? It, we maybe have time for one more. Okay. So the next problem is find the inverse function of f of x equals 3 over 5 times x cubed minus 9. Like that? Yep. Okay, first step? The first step is to switch around your x and y. Okay, so what's the so next line? x equals 3 over fifths times y to the third minus 9. Now solve then, that equation for y. Yes. What's so you'd add 9 to both sides and then multiply by 5 over 3 before taking the cubed root. Yeah. Multiply that by 5 over 3 and that's going to equal y cubed. And then I'm going to take the cube root and I can do that by just doing this. Or I can put it all to the one third exponent. Okay. Now. They may not really like that answer. I'm curious, does your book have an answer on this one? Is this an odd or an even? This is an odd, so it will have an answer. Yeah, tell me what their answer is, because I could, I could change that answer a little bit. In other words, this has an irrational denominator. They, they tend not to like irrational denominators. Okay, so their answer is um, the cubed root of 5 over 3 times x plus 15. Why is it x plus 15? I... Did I write the original? With, there were no parentheses in the original? Correct. There were no parentheses. Okay, so when I switch the variables, and then the very first step is to add 9 to both sides. So you get x plus 9 equals 3 fifths y cubed, right? Right. Now I get, multiply both sides by 5 thirds. That gives me this. Ah. Hmm. So that gives okay. me that. Now I take the cube root of both sides. That should be the answer. 
do they multiply five and nine and then divide that by three? Maybe, yeah, that's exactly what they did. You're exactly right. So what they got was y cubed equals five thirds x plus 15. In other words, they separate, they distributed the five thirds, and then they took the cube root of that whole expression. That's fine. You know, lots of answers can be expressed in different ways. That answer that they have is the same as what I did originally. It's just I had parentheses originally, and they did away with the parentheses. So All right. they did away with the parentheses. They got the 15. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, so, yeah. All right. Well, good. Um, uh, as I said, this is recorded. And by tomorrow morning, you will have a recording of this.